Well, this uh, shutdown gives us another opportunity to catch up with a famous former Orange standout. We join uh, Justin Pugh from the desert, uh, now with the Arizona Cardinals. And Justin, good to see you. And I guess that's the upside of uh, the quarantine right now. We've all got an opportunity to, to catch up and spend a little more time together. How are things? I'm doing well, thanks. Thanks for having me on. Well, uh, yeah, it's, it's been a little crazy though. We've, we, the Zoom has gotten a lot of use as of late. That's good. Well, I'm glad you're a pro. And uh, it's good to kind of uh, catch up with you. And the reason to really have you on now is I know there's a cause uh, close to your heart. Uh, you spent uh, so much time with the Giants before going out to the Cardinals after being a, a first-round draft pick out of the Qs. And you've made some connections that are uh, right in the middle of it uh, in terms of battling uh, COVID-19 in New York. And, and uh, you've got a way that people can help. Yeah, so basically what I wanted to touch base on today, a friend of mine that I grew up in grade school with, uh, you know, she went off to medical school and she sees a lot of uh, her friends and coworkers now battling this virus. And uh, obviously in New York City, they're lacking a lot of the basic materials. So basically what it is, is it's PPE, uh, is, is protective personal equipment. And basically they're looking for anyone that has access, you know, maybe laying around the house, you were doing a project and you bought some of those N95 masks. You don't realize they're in your shed. Or, you know, you have some surgical masks, disposable gowns, face shields. The basic necessi necessities of people on the front line, the first responders in the medical world need to fight this disease. Um, so obviously the power of social media, the more people that can hear this, the Syracuse alum that are out there, um, you know, we, we definitely would need your help. So you can go to their page. Uh, we, we have it tagged in here below. And, uh, and you can go to my page and, and get there as well. And they're, and they're looking for any, any help they can to get some of these equipment out there. Now, also, I know that there's a link to, to donate to some of the meals for, for the first responders. That would definitely help. Um, but obviously, the, the, the mask and the other personal protective equipment that's, that is available, if you have it, you can send it in. There's you know, links on there to follow. Any other questions, you can, you can DM me, um, DM the page. And, and the, the, the main goal is to help those that are fighting on the front lines of this. And if we can help, uh, even better. So the main Instagram page we want to send people to right now is uh, at PPE for Frontliners NYC, PPE at Frontliners, uh, PPE for Frontliners NYC. Uh, that's on Instagram. Justin himself is very active on uh, Twitter and Instagram and uh, easy to find there. And I know you've got in your bio, you've got some uh, links and, and some shortcuts uh, to get to those folks. And as people know, you, you aren't going to the hardware store to buy those things now, but maybe you did have a few extra masks or, or that type of equipment uh, stored up. Every little bit helps. And uh, you're a frontliner when it comes to football. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure you've got uh, newfound respect for uh, the frontliners and uh, first responders when it comes to dealing with uh, all the medical emergencies throughout the country. Yeah, definitely. I think it's a lot of times, and, and, and I'm guilty of it, we take for granted those people that do the basic necessities in, in our lives. And then when you realize, you know, the athletes and the, and the famous and the Instagram and the social media, all that goes to the wayside. And it's, it's, it's meaningless when it comes to, to, to life and what we need to be able to give to these people. Now, it's great that we can interact and we can be able to give to those people that need our help. But the first responders, the people on the front lines, your, you know, your, your medical professionals, and then you look at the police forces and the firefighters and everyone that's putting themselves at risk to help out you know, our communities, we have to support them any way we can. And this is the one way that I've found that we can help, uh, especially in, in New York City, where you know, I have so many fond memories and a lot of connections. I'm, I'm hoping that I can help do my part to uh, you know, make a difference. I was going to say, that's certainly the epicenter of the disease in America right now. And uh, you had to just anybody with the New York Giants for as long as you were build strong relationships with NYPD and FDNY. And uh, I know you've got a lot of respect for those folks. Yeah, you know, I, I, I don't know, I get goosebumps talking about it just because you, you know how resilient that city is and, and what those people uh, have been through in the past. Uh, we, we know that New York will come out on the other side of it. But, you know, being around it and, and, and Syracuse is such a close proximity to New York City. A lot of people, you know, go back and forth and a lot of alumni are in New York. So uh, it definitely it hits home. And if we can do, you know, a little bit of good, it definitely will, will, will make some waves. Give us a snapshot of what it's like where you are now, Justin. You're working out, right, going to the facility. But how about life in Arizona right yeah, now? We actually, we actually can't go to the facilities right okay. now. And, and we can't even work out off-site with any of our, our, our coaches. So it's, it's a little weird for me. Um, I was still at Syracuse at the time during the 2011. The NFL had a lockout. So some of the guys had to train on their own. Um, 
kind of doing some primitive things in the garages and trying to, you know, make, make by with whatever you can. Uh, the NFL is working on trying to get some, some racks out to guys um, just so we can be, you know, in it and, and working out. We have our iPads they send out so you can stay on. We're going to do some Zoom calls uh, to go over the playbooks. But uh, it's definitely a weird time, and we're all going through it and finding this new normal. And, uh, and hopefully once we get back into the swing of things and, and the normalcy of the, of the football season will help bring some uh, much-needed relief to everybody at home. Yeah, quick curveball. Literally, Major League Baseball, as you know, is at least floating the idea of starting or playing a large part of the season in Phoenix. Is that feasible? What's it like there now? And, and do you yeah. see spring training facilities? Could they be sparked up if need be? Yeah, I think so. A, a lot of the teams, and you know, half the teams are already out here for, for spring training. A lot of guys live here, and they're already quarantining in Arizona. Um, so it would be one of those places that would be a good foundation for it. And Phoenix is a very spread out city. Um, so maybe that's why it hasn't hit us as hard because social distancing is kind of, I don't want to say common practice, but we're not necessarily, you know, using the elevators every day that everyone is, or the grocery stores aren't as congested as a, as a New York. Um, and, and we also got to see what happened in those major cities and kind of make those adjustments before it could get to us. Um, so it has been a, a little bit better. I don't know, you know, obviously I'm not a, a doctor or an expert. We've had some warm weather. I know they, they've said that may help a little bit. Um, but who knows? At the end of the day, we're just following the CDC guidelines and, and trying to do our best uh, because we all are – it really is a guessing game. And I'm hoping we can get some sports back and, and, and bring some normalcy to our lives because I know a lot of us are looking forward to that. I know the UFC was looking at renting an island. So who knows what, what, what's going on? Uh, amen to that. So let's talk a little football. So uh, two years now uh, with the Cardinals, uh, really you had back-to-back -back sort of half seasons. And then you bounced back and played virtually every snap last year for the Cardinals. Uh, give us a snapshot of, of where you are uh, in your career, 86 starts deep uh, at this point, and, and what do you think? You know, when I first got to Syracuse as a wide-eye freshman, I, I thought I'd be coming there, get my degree in finance, and, you know, going into a New York City and, and getting a job on Wall Street. And fortunately, my time at Syracuse was able to, you know, show me that I can play this game at a high level. And Coach Marone and, and a lot of the coaches I had at Syracuse, Coach Hicks, the strength coach, he's still there. He's my guy. Uh, they got me to a point that I could play in the NFL and, and was fortunate enough to get drafted and, and play for a lot of years. But then you start to see the business side of football in New York. Uh, you know, things didn't work out for me there and moved on and got to Arizona, dealt with some injuries, dealt with some adversity. And it, it's really taught me to, to value this game and, and how much it means to me. And to go out there last year and play all 16 games for the first time since 2013, uh, it was a huge accomplishment for me. And I'm looking forward to doing that again this year and, and getting this team to the playoffs. Well, Arizona is a hot spot in more ways than one. And across the line of scrimmage from you, you've got – a former teammate from college and a guy you know awfully well and Chandler Jones and and he looks to be thriving out there too. I mean Chandler's never missed a beat. Um, he's gotten better and better. I mean he's literally taken that curve and just gone straight up. I mean starting at Syracuse when he first got there he he I always messed with him. He looked like Gumby. He had these long arms and he had you know he didn't have much muscle to him yet and and once he got into the NFL, he's just exploded. And now he's unblockable. Should have won Defensive Player of the Year last year. And I've got to see him mature as well and, and where he's come from and from Syracuse. We went against each other every single day. Um, so it's a special relationship. I couldn't be more proud. He was named to the All-Decade team. Um, and he's well on his way to getting a gold jacket in Canton. So that's just an honor for me that I got a chance to play with Chandler. Um, Got to kick his butt a few times. But obviously, I've been on the other end of it as well. He's definitely beaten me his fair share. But now I get to watch him do it to other guys again in Arizona. And that's something special. I mean, not a lot of guys get to play with a, a close friend that they play with in college and, and get to relive those memories all over again. Yeah, Chandler's uh, first team All-Pro for the second time in the last three years, once with the Patriots and now once with the, the Cardinals. And that is a pretty cool thing. I mean, you guys are from, you know, similar neck of the woods when you talk about it. You're a a Pennsylvania guy, he's an upstate New Yorker, and, and you've had that bond for a long time. It speaks well of the program to have a couple of pros in the, in the same position. And what, what is it about your time here at Syracuse, Justin, that, that you think sparked you? I mean, you're somebody that really caught on in your last uh, couple of years. As you said, you were bracing for a real job, and, and yeah. uh, the NFL presented itself, and, and you wanted to be in a first-round pick. I think it's the it's the blue collar hard working mentality that we had there. It was it wasn't we were going to be the best athletes on the field, and and, I, and I'm even going through that nowadays. I, I'm not the biggest uh, the 
the strongest, the fastest offensive lineman on there. Uh, and, but I'm still playing. I, you, I got 86 starts. That's, cr- that's crazy to even hear that, you know, I, a kid that was a two-star, no one thought much of, and has been able to go out and play in the NFL. So the, the, definitely the work ethic. And I think that's one thing that, that Syracuse, we kind of embody as a program, is, is that mentality that the, the community has. And I try to always, you know, represent proudly and, and always remember where I came from. And that's something that I'm proud of the guys now. Um, I'm proud. Of, I'm, I'm excited for this upcoming season. Um, obviously, last year, you know, things didn't go the way we wanted them to, but that's life. Uh, and, and we're going to find out the character of the men on that team this year. And I, I couldn't be more proud to, to rep the S I got on my hat right now. <laughs> you, you're, uh, and you put your money where your mouth is. You, you've been uh, doing that for a long time. What would you think of the season uh, just prior to that, winning 10 games and, and kind of getting back on the map a bit? Oh, for sure. That was huge for us. And it kind of reminded me of, of, of my last year at Syracuse. We were the co-Big East champs. The kids in the team probably don't even know the Big East is anymore. But, you know, I, we were the Big East. We, we, were, we did some really good things. And, and we know what type of men we have on that team. And, and, and they're coming from the same areas that I came from. So I, I know the character of the men in that room. And, and Coach Babers has done an unbelievable job. Uh, the alumni are, are very proud. And you can, you can see where this program is heading. And I'm excited for that. I wonder what you thought, Justin, about the upcoming draft. You know, this is an unprecedented period in time uh, in our country with, with COVID-19 and all the impact that it's made. And so for the guys who are draft hopefuls this year, and there are a few of them, it's not going to be the same experience that you and so many others have had. And there's probably some trade-offs to that. What, what would you say to, you know, it happens to be a couple of our defensive linemen like uh, Kendall Coleman and, and Alton Robinson, but, but there's, you know, four or five potential draftees there. Yeah, for sure. And I think, you know, I look at it. I wasn't invited to the draft. I went, I ended up fortunately enough going 19th overall and they didn't get invited. So there was, there were still 10 guys sitting in that green room in New York city. When I got drafted, I was able to spend that time with the people that meant the most to me, the people that were there from the beginning before I was an NFL draft prospect. So I look at a glass half full guys, all my draftees out there. Uh, if you're watching this, enjoy the time with your family, enjoy the one with the loved ones that helped get you there. Um, it, it may not be the exact experience you were hoping for, but this is a unique, memorable experience. Maybe not the best situation, but you have to make the best of it. Um, you're going to be able to get a chance to play in, in the greatest professional sports league on the planet to fulfill your dreams. You're going to be able to go out there and put those pads on. So uh, you're, you're still very, very fortunate and enjoy that moment and just cherish being with the ones you love the most. And now's the time because, as you say, it's the business and once you're a pro, there's kind of no turning back, right? It becomes your life. Yeah, exactly. And that's the one thing I think a lot of rookies struggle with is, is when you get to a school and you get that scholarship, you're there for four years, regardless of, you know, whether you play or you don't play. Um, but then once you get to the professional level, we are in the business of football. Uh, we just went through a, a collective bargaining agreement, um, negotiations, and you really see the business side of football, the TV revenues, how we make our money, how – different things happen. Uh, you know, I can go on and on about it because I feel very uh, strong about educating the young guys as they come into our league. And I, I see how eager the young guys are to learn. So I'm excited about the future of this, uh, you know, this league. Well, I can tell your background too, because of the finance interest and, and uh, the education you've had, you're keen on that stuff and, and uh, you know, it's in your best interest to stay on top of it. Oh, every time uh, we're having a conversation, I always just, you know, throw a little blurb in there. I got that Syracuse education just to, uh, you know, some of those SEC schools want to get a little a little froggy until we start dropping some knowledge on them. That's right. Well, Ryan Nassib came back to a, a recent game and, and uh, you know, it's kind of what somebody asked him what he was up to. I think Adam Terry asked him. And, uh, well, you know, investment banking, <laughs> like he uh, it kind of was inevitably going to wind up there however long his NFL career uh, went and, and is another guy that's doing awfully well. Yeah, Ryan was was one of the greats of Syracuse and just just put his nose to the grindstone and kept working. And that was always his mentality. And everyone always respected Ryan for that. So there there was no doubt he was going to be successful in whatever happened post football. Obviously, we can't control some of the injury things, but uh, Ryan's going to be one of those guys that will will always represent represent and, and and be a proud Syracuse alum. Well, awesome stuff, Justin. Uh, nobody. Uh, you know, is ahead of you when it comes to uh, flying the flag and, and keeping in contact. So we appreciate that. And I uh, want to pump the uh, Instagram page again, uh, PPE for Frontliners NYC. And uh, hope we can head some traffic uh, in the direction there that helps out your friends and everybody in New York.
Yeah, for sure. If anyone has any questions, you can always comment on there. I'll respond to any of the messages on there. Uh, I appreciate you guys having me on. Go Orange. Look forward to a, a great fall semester coming up.